I promised it during the server build last week, and here it is, the much anticipated tutorial for how to install Proxmox. Let's get started. Welcome back to Craft Computing, everyone. As always, I'm Jeff. If you're new to the channel, welcome. I usually don't do tutorials on this channel, but when I do, it tends to add some more viewers that I don't normally get. So if you are new, make sure to like and maybe hit that subscribe button so you can see what I'm all about. Now that the formalities are out of the way, let's get to the business at hand. Today, I'm gonna to be walking through the installation process for Proxmox, a free and open source virtualization system that you can run at home. We're gonna be installing this today on my Dual Xeon E52650 server. And if you wanna see the build process for that server, you can go ahead and click right up there. On the screen behind me is the finished splash screen for the Proxmox installer. So I've already got it installed, but let's go ahead and walk through the steps on how we got to this point. Honestly, the whole process only takes about five minutes. First, you're gonna to wanna to head on over to proxmox.com, click on the downloads tab, and then go down to the Proxmox VE 5.4 ISO installer. Once you have the ISO downloaded, go ahead and grab yourself an 8GB USB key and flash the image onto it. I use Etcher for this, but you can use a number of different programs as long as it will create a bootable Linux key for you. Links to Proxmox.com and Etcher are down in the video description. Once you have your Proxmox USB created, go ahead and stick it into your computer of choice, preferably not the one you're using right now, and then go ahead and boot to that USB drive. This will launch you into the Proxmox installer, and honestly at this point it's only about 3 or 4 clicks and you're ready to roll. The first thing you're gonna to wanna to do in here is go ahead and agree to those license terms and feel free to read them or not, that's your choice. Secondly, you're gonna to wanna to select what drive you'd like to install Proxmox onto. Now you're more than welcome to take your Proxmox USB installer and install Proxmox onto another USB stick. It will run and it should run just fine. However, I don't recommend doing that for running a server 24 seven as USB drives can inherently not be all that stable long-term. I do recommend installing onto a hard drive or solid state drive of some kind. Now, the drive speed and the size really don't matter as there's not a lot of read-write activity happening on the operating system drive. There's just a much lower likelihood that the drive will fail. In my case, I'm going to be installing onto a pair of Kingston 120 gig SSDs in a RAID 1. The RAID means that one of the drives can fail and the system will keep on ticking. After that, it's pretty much standard fare for setting up an operating system. Set a root password, enter an email address, select your time zone, and then set up your IP and host name for the system. Once this is all done, you can remove the USB key and reboot. And that's what we're gonna do over here right now. Now we're just waiting for the system to boot. And I know it's hard to see, but that black screen that says welcome to Proxmox means success. So you can actually leave your server alone now and just access a web browser to finish everything else up. To access your brand new server, you're going to open up a web browser and go to HTTPS colon slash slash, the IP address that you entered for your server, which in my case is 10.0.1.10, then a colon followed by 8006. Now what that does is it accesses that IP address via HTTPS on port 8006. And unless you're running a home certificate server already and you've already injected that certificate into your server, you're going to run into this message because your server is not signed. This is perfectly fine. Go ahead and click on advanced and then go to this website anyway. Or in Firefox's case, accept the risk and continue. I believe uh, Chrome says continue onto the website or visit anyway. To log in, you're gonna log in as root and then the password that you set up on the server. The first time you log into the server, and in fact, I think every time you log into the server, you're gonna be greeted by this message right here, which says no valid subscription. Don't worry, Proxmox is free and open source. The subscription is only for subscription support for enterprise. So unless you wanna purchase that, just go ahead and click okay and move on. So here is your homepage for Proxmox. Now, before we get into what all of these options are, it's important to understand what Proxmox is. Proxmox is a virtualization environment that is designed to run with one or multiple servers on a network. Each one of those servers is called a node. Now, in my case, I'm only gonna be running, well, one node, because I only have one physical server. The way Proxmox is laid out is we have a data center tab, which is all of your global settings that would affect all of your Proxmox servers. This is gonna configure things like shared storage, backups, replications, and authentications for your users. Underneath the data center are your nodes. Now, again, in my case, I only have the one server. And if we click on it, that's gonna configure all of the settings that are specific to this server itself. Things like local network, certificates, firewall, and local storage. So now that we know how it works, we can go ahead and get our VMs fired up and start rocking, right? Not quite. First, we need a place to store our VMs. There are a number of methods for setting up storage inside of Proxmox. I'm gonna set up a couple different versions and then go over the pros and cons of each. Let's go ahead and start with local storage. 
Inside of Proxmox, and very similar to FreeNAS if you've ever set up that, you cannot use your local OS drives as a storage pool. You have to set up your storage on a completely separate disk or set of disks, and that's exactly what we're gonna do here. So for starters, click on ZFS and then go up to Create ZFS. We're gonna go ahead and name this Local Proxmox. We're gonna set this up as a mirror drive or a RAID 1 in my case, and then I'm gonna select both of my drives down here. Now, a quick note on this, your drives have to be 100% clean. They can't have any data or any partition data even on them, or they will not show up inside of this configuration wizard. Once you've got everything set, go ahead and click create. And now we have some local storage for storing VMs. The next thing we're gonna do is set up a network storage drive. And this is pretty simple to do as well. Uh, we're gonna go up to data center as this is a global setting and will be shared among all of your Proxmox nodes. We're gonna click on storage and then we're gonna click on add. And in my case, it's gonna be a CIFS drive. Although you can add an NFS drive if that's more your style. Under ID, that's just the name of the share. So we're gonna name this network Proxmox. Server is the IP address of your server. And in my case is 10.0.1.7. And then we're gonna type in a user authentication so we can actually get access to the share. And if we've done that right, if we click on the pull down menu for share, we're gonna see all of these storage shares that are available with that user credential. Uh, in my case, I'm gonna click on this Proxmox share that I created earlier. One last thing we need to do before we exit and that's select the type of content that can be available on this share. So disk image is your virtual machine disk images. ISO images is any shared ISO bootable files that you'd like to have access to. Container templates is your Docker style container templates or, or preloaded uh, configurations. And then containers are your Docker images themselves. So we're gonna select all of those and then go ahead and click add. And that ties beautifully into our first pro and con for network versus local storage. Local storage cannot store ISO images or container templates. If you're only using local storage, that means you're not gonna be able to just load up an ISO file and boot a VM off of that. You're gonna to need to come up with some other method, whether that's using a Pixie boot on a network or possibly passing through a USB key through the physical server. Local storage is typically going to be the faster option, especially if you're limited to one gigabit network speeds. In my case, I do have 10 gigabit going to my FreeNAS box, and it's actually capable of saturating that 10 gig link, especially with read heavy operations. But your mileage may vary if you choose to go with the network-based option. Inside of Proxmox, there are plenty of other options for connecting to storage pools as well, such as NFS, iSCSI, and others. But that's really gonna depend on what you have locally at your house. In general, I would opt for local storage more often than not, but having the network storage there, especially for the ISO booting, is gonna be a benefit. Now, as I alluded to earlier, there are data center level configurations and there's local node level configurations. Going over both real quick, they are actually pretty self-explanatory for what they do. If you click on data center and then click on summary, here's your overall status of how many nodes are online, how many virtual machines, and how many Linux containers you have running, as well as an overall view of what resources you have available in your entire network. Scrolling down a little bit further, we see the craft Proxmox node. Again, I only have the one node, uh, its server address, as well as its current utilization and uptime. Cluster configuration is where you would set up if you have multiple nodes and you want to link between them. Also under the data center tab for global configuration, we can set up storage. We've already been there, try to catch up. Uh, we've also got uh, backups, replication, and then permissions, which is where you set up user accounts and resource access. Now under the individual craft Proxmox node that I've set up, which is the physical box, this is where I would set up everything local to this physical machine. If we click on summary, we get the same resource uh, reports in here, this time with some nice pretty graphs, a uh, little bit easier to read and get some history on there as well. Clicking on the node tab, you will also have access to the shell directly. Now, a quick note, this does log you in as root by default. So do be careful if you go poking your finger in there. Under the systems menu is things like network configuration, DNS, our host file, system time, as well as a system log file. There's an updates tab, and this is basically an apt-get update and an apt-get upgrade, uh, just a nice graphical interface of doing so. And scrolling down just a little bit further, again, we've got our disks as well as replication. So if you're part of a cluster and you've set up replication, uh, this is where that would show up. All right, what do you say we get our first virtual machine set up and running? Here is the Proxmox directory that's on my FreeNAS box that I alluded to earlier. This is where our network share is located. When you set up the network share, it automatically creates these four folders right here. The one we're gonna be concerned with right now is the templates folder, and inside of that is the ISO folder. And this is where we drop our bootable ISOs. So you can see over here, I've got the Ubuntu 18.04 server ISO. I'm just gonna drop that over into here. Back over to the Proxmox GUI, we're gonna go ahead and set up our first VM, and we're gonna do that by clicking the Create VM button up in the top right. For starters, go ahead and select which node you want to install your VM onto. Now, again, we only have one node, so we're gonna set it up there. VM ID, you need to set up a unique number to identify each virtual machine, as that's how Proxmox identifies them, by number, not by name. 
Speaking of name, go ahead and type in a name for your VM right underneath. So in my case, I'm gonna actually create a new PyHole server. And down here in the bottom right, there's a little advanced button. This is where you can set uh, start up a boot. And I think I'm gonna go ahead and do that because I'm gonna want this virtual machine running all the time. Now that that's set up, let's go ahead and click on next. And this is where having that network storage really comes in handy as we're gonna set up my new VM using a CD or DVD disk ISO. Uh, we're gonna select our Proxmox network storage. And then under ISO, I'm gonna select the Ubuntu ISO that I just drug over there. Under guest OS, make sure you set up the right OS type for the uh, right settings within your VM. So in this case, we are using Linux, but if you're using Windows or something else, you can go and select that right there. Under system, this is where you can set up what type of virtual graphics card you wanna have, or if you wanna emulate a serial terminal or any kind of number of things. Uh, for right now, we're just gonna go default. That's really all we need. Also on the system tab, if you have the advanced box checked, uh, you can also set up different machine BIOS and different machine types if that's something that interests you. Go ahead and hit next. This is where we set up our hard drive. Now this is the one area I'm gonna be a little bit critical of Proxmox where I wish it was a little bit more fleshed out. Now in most modern hypervisor systems, when I set up a virtual disk to be used by a virtual machine, uh, you give the disk a max size. So let's say I wanted to create a 250 gigabyte disk. That would create an upper limit of 250 gigabytes that that virtual machine could not store more than. In this case, Proxmox sets a disk size and then it allocates all of that space off of your drive. So if I set up a 32 gigabyte disk, it doesn't matter if I'm only using two gigabytes of that 32, I've taken up 32 gigabytes worth of storage on my local server. I'm not really a fan of this. I really wish they would implement a dynamically expanding disk, but unfortunately this is what we have to work with right now. And honestly, I don't think it's a terrible trade going with Proxmox. Yes, you're gonna end up using a little bit more disk space than you normally would for virtual machines, but in trade, you get a very nice interface that's very easy to use. So for this VM, I'm gonna go ahead and set up a 20 gigabyte disk, hit next. And this is where we set up our CPU. I'm gonna go ahead and set up only two CPU cores because this is not a very intensive VM that I'm setting up. Under the memory tab, Proxmox is capable of using dynamically allocated memory, unlike the hard drive, uh, but you do need to have the advanced box clicked down here. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and give my Pi Hole a max of three gigabytes of memory, and we're gonna set up a minimum of 768. So that means it will always have at least 768 available, but it will only grab up to three gigabytes. If it doesn't use all three gigabytes, other virtual machines can still use from the same pool. Under networking, it automatically sets up one virtual NIC for you. If you'd like to add a second virtual NIC, maybe you're setting up a PFSense box, uh, you can do that at a later time. Go ahead and click next, and then go ahead and click finish if all these settings look good to you. Once that is complete, you'll see a new icon pop up right here for your new virtual machine. So in my case, craft pie hole. And just like we have data center level and node level options, uh, there's also virtual machine level options as well. Uh, so if we click on summary, we'll get a nice summary of all of the available resources to this virtual machine. Inside of hardware, this is where you would add, remove hardware or change your memory and CPU allocations. This is also gonna be where you add additional hardware like additional virtual network cards, hard drives, optical drives. You can pass through USB devices. Uh, you can also pass through PCI devices if your hardware supports it. This would be, for instance, I wanna add two network cards to my server and allocate them directly to a PFSense box, or I wanna set up a graphics card and pass it through to a remote render server or a remote gaming server. This is where you would do that at. Other options on this list include uh, backups, replication, as well as snapshots. So if you wanted to set up a virtual machine and do some testing on it to see how various settings affect it, you could create a snapshot in time and then revert back to that at any point. Once you are ready to launch your virtual machine, go ahead and click on the console, which is gonna be your uh, monitor into the VM. And then you can click start right up here at the top, or there's also a power option down here for the VM and we can click start right there. So there's our BIOS screen, and just like that, we're already loading the Ubuntu ISO. And you're pretty much done. If you wanna see a complete walkthrough on setting up PyHole, I actually did a tutorial on how to set that up inside of a virtual machine inside of FreeNAS already. You can click right up here for that video. Otherwise, this is gonna be where I leave you for today. Thank you guys so much for watching this tutorial on setting up your own Proxmox server. Do let me know what you thought about it down in the comments below, or if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Make sure to like this video if you liked it and subscribe to Craft Computing if you haven't done so already. And you're gonna wanna subscribe because there's a number of new tutorials on virtual machine services coming up in the next couple of weeks. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at Craft Computing. And if you're interested in financially backing the channel, make sure to look me up on Patreon. A $1 donation gets you access to my exclusive Discord server and helps fund projects like this. Thank you guys so much for watching this one. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Cheers guys.